This weekend, the UK selected their entry for Eurovision 2016. BBC released the six songs that were selected for the national final, and me and Rob, we're going to go through them now. Overall, Rob, what do you think of the six songs? I, I'm actually really quite impressed. Considering what we had last year, I think anything would have been a bonus. <laughs> But it's nice to see that we haven't got a joke song in the selection. I think you'll agree with that because there was always the there was always the danger that with the general public voting, if there was a joke song, we could have had another scooch and we won't, yeah. which is good. Yeah, it's nice that this sort of idea of having a massive open casting calls worked because that way the BBC get their input, but then we get ours. But the fact that it was a hundred percent our choice did scare me. Yeah, a oh, hundred percent. So I thought they're going to pick one joke act and everyone's going to go, oh, that's a bit of a laugh, let's send that one. And then yeah. the people who don't watch it until Eurovision get there, they're going to go, why the hell have we sent this? And then we're just sat there for three hours watching our names slowly get further and further down the board. Further and further, further down. And when all the telly votes come through and we're the first country to get announced, it's like UK, four points. From the whole of Europe, really. <laughs> you can see it already. But... but um, I think I think I think the BBC went for a certain style of song this year, didn't, didn't they? Oh, they? They're all definitely. They're, they're all not entirely dissimilar. They're all slightly different, but at the same time, they're all they're slightly the same. Like duets seem to be big in this year, clearly. Apparently so. But, probably off of uh, probably after Norway last year, I imagine. Well, there was like what seven duets last year, and we were the one bad one. So you know, <laughs> we've up yeah, that bit. Overall, I think they are pretty good, but um... I feel like I'm more optimistic about this than you are. No, I am optimistic. I am thinking it's going to do well, but at the same time, I do think maybe one of the two that I am thinking about that can win probably won't. Go on then, what are your two that you think could win? Well, or you'd like to win at least? My two favourites at this moment in time are Darlene or... Until tomorrow, hold on to me, and I'll hold on to you, I won't let go... And Joe and Jake. You're not alone. Me too. Would you look at that? It's quite hard for me to split these two. Like, who's top and who's second? Like, if either yeah. win, I'm perfectly happy with either. They've both got positives and negatives in different senses, I guess you could say. But yeah. Darlene, I've not really, I've never heard before. I've never heard of them before. I haven't heard any of their other music and all this. So I don't know if they. Are, have... I suppose they're a, they're a little bit like an all female version of the Common Linux, aren't they? Sort yeah. of. Yeah. Well, I said the song reminded me a lot of um, Denmark 2012. It's just a bit yeah. of an upbeat version of that. Yeah, I, hear that. Yeah, I, I think like their voices, voices really work together. Yeah, their voices work fantastically together. They look pretty, they'll look the part. Like I said, my main concern is obviously I haven't seen them doing anything live or whatnot, so we don't know how they're going to manage. And also... I feel like they could be all right. They've been supporting the Shires for about a year okay. now, so they're, they're, they're used to sort of playing in front of a, a decent crowd at least. Maybe not, you know, 20,000 people no. in an arena, but... No, and another thing is we've got to consider is obviously the stage this year for SCT is massive, so yeah. a yeah. song to fill that is going to be difficult. I mean, it might be fine for the O2 in Kentish Town, but back home, I, I, I do. Don't, yeah, I, I don't I'm know. Looking forward to, I am looking forward to how small that stage is going to be on Friday. Yeah, well, I've never actually been there, so I'm excited to go. To go, but, but uh, no, I think um, like Jack and Joe. Is, is it Jack and Joe? I get Jake and Joe. Jake and Joe. Jake and Joe. I've been getting it wrong. I've been getting it wrong all day. Um, I think they do have a song that could fill a stage because it's more upbeat and you can imagine a lot with the lighting and the backdrop and the pyrotechnics and stuff. So I think if I had to pick one out of Darlene and, and Jack and Jake even and Joe, <laughs> I think um, even though I can't say their names properly, I think that would probably be the one that I hope wins. Yeah, and I agree. Like J Joe and Jake, they have the look as well. Like They look like they can perform that. Obviously, they've both been on The Voice. It was announced they both yeah. actually got people to turn around, Bianca. So, back to plus. <laughs> people actually supported them. Like I said, you mentioned they're... Bianca. I would say Bianca's my third favourite. Okay. But, um, so they said people on The Voice actually supported them. So that's good. So they're used to performing in live shows and blah, 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 blah. blah. They look like they can easily sw swig the teenage folks. They look, you know, they've got that sort of little look. Yeah, like I said, we've got to see what it looks like live and how it sounds. My main issue was, obviously, I listened to two of them before I left for work and the whole day I could not remember the melody of their song like I can remember the song title and their names but nothing else was coming into my head which I've got it in my head now but there's, there's that but it's only because I've listened to it about four times 
Um, and the other, the only song, it's not a UK song, but the only other song I've had in my head all day is uh, Lighthouse X or Lighthouse 10 or however we're saying yeah, the name. Everyone's comparing those two, but I don't see it, personally. Maybe I'm just being naive and stupid, but I don't see it as much. Well, whatever happens, you know Denmark will do the staging much slicker than we will, because we do always manage to mess that up somehow. Yeah, let's not go into that. <laughs> but all things considered, I think those two are the two that should go, one of those who should go, and if there is a super final, I don't know how they're doing it, they should be the top two. And yeah, I'm regardless... intrigued to see how it works. I, I, I don't think there's time for a super final, you know, because it's no. only an hour and a half. No, but either way, I think they will both will do well, and I think they both will have careers in this, because the positivity online seems to be huge for these two. Right, you mentioned was... Bianca. Yeah, um, I, I like it. I think it's a bit... I um, I played it to my girlfriend just before we did this video. I think she said Bianca's song was That's Very Eurovision, <laughs> which I think is true. I, I think it's a little bit sort of like cliche ballad, isn't it? Yeah, it, it confused me. It sounds a bit like it had a bit of an identity, an identity crisis to me, because when I first heard it, the first thing I got was it's sort of like Calypso and all that, reg almost reggae, and I was like, okay, this is really, really bizarre. And then the chorus is like like a typical ballad, and then the last minute it goes into a proper ballad, so I was really confused. It's she like was... a bad version of Agnet's song in Norway. Yeah, I guess. Because I mean, that can... song's a little bit of a mishmash of like every single genre, let's <laughs> stick together. So she it's can... a little bit like that, I think. She can sing well, I'll give her that. She the can. Ti and... title's confusing though, Shine yeah. a Little Light. <laughs> the song written by um, Leona Lewis as well. Yeah, well, one of the many writers they mentioned, but yeah, her name cropped up. But yeah, so... They... Shine a little light, that does sound confusing. Especially like yeah. people, if people are shooting for the first time on Saturday, Friday even, they're going to be a bit, eh, what's going on there? Yeah, but probably. I'm not a huge if, fan of the song, personally. If you had to pick someone to finish last, who would it be? Matthew James. See, we were talking about songs that get stuck in your head. That song has been stuck in my head as well for a while, actually. <laughs> But the, I, I think Carl William Lund with Miracle, I think that's the most forgettable song in the semi. Yeah. In the semi? In the final, even. Yeah, but with Mark, with Matthew, obviously he was announced on the Sun yesterday, and he yeah. was an ex 90s boy band member, and you can kind of tell. Because oh, the song is very 90s. It's dated. Very even, nice. even the title, A Better Man, a tad dated, and just the, yeah. it, it all sounds a bit like a cheap Peter Andre, to be blunt. <laughs> if we I'm, send him, we will finish in the bottom five. Yeah, this I might guarantee. This might have to be my toilet break. If he's on last, I might go out before the voting starts. I, that's, and that's, that's pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty, pretty good bet. I do wonder what order they're going to put them on on yeah, Friday. Yeah. Like, whether the order might be the order they were revealed in. I hope not. Because well, if it is, then it means that Darlene have got a really good chance because they're like fourth out of six. Yeah, but it also um, Jake and, Jake and Joe opening. not so much. No, but again, with only six songs, it's not it's not exactly a massive selection, so he still can be seen and heard, I guess. Yes, and especially true. if you do a good enough job. Like I said, people will remember Jake and Joe from The Voice because it was only last year. Yeah, you know, well, we'll see. Uh, with your response to William, I cut William. Is it... oh, what's his name? Carl. I can't remember his name. Oh, no. Carl William Lund. That was it. Thank you. Uh, it's it's all right. It's not a bad song. It, I, well, do... I think I think if ever there was a phrase to sum up quite a lot of the songs in this final, it would be "It's all right." Yeah, I think I do think it's quite <laughs> safe. I saw that on Twitter, and it is quite safe. But I think this year we need to be quite safe. Yeah, I agree. Because whenever we try to be a bit bold and out there, it's never really worked. Like Electro Velvet. Uh, I mean, the idea was great, and me and my friend said we loved the fact that it was like almost nineteen twenties in Charleston. Yeah. But... No one else is going to get this. And we said this like no. as soon as it got released. So it's a good idea, but who else outside Britain understands 1920s and swing? It's well, no that, one, that was really. the thing. It was the contrast between like, us sending Electro Velvet, which is just a genre that nobody knows, and then Sweden winning with Heroes, which it was the most like of the moment modern sounding song yeah, in the contest. Yeah. The most down the middle song you could pick with good staging, yeah. and it wins. <laughs> yeah, cool. But and then like the year before, sending Molly. I, again, tried to be a bit clever. It was better. I did love that song. That song did deserve much I better. I did, but I will still state she looked awful and nerves got to her going last. She was really nervous. You could hear she it. She was and she, really she, nervous. And she looked awful. Like, I was around my friends, there was a group of us, and me and my friend both turned around and said, why she got a dead lion on her shoulders? <laughs> it was a strange outfit, I'll give you that. I, yeah, it was a strange outfit. It was quite scary, I think, in um, for all the performers in Copenhagen, because that stage was quite intimidating. Yeah. I think Molly's song, it's a weird comment, but I think Molly's song would have done much better 
on the Malmo stage. It was smaller yeah. and more in. Or in Vienna, I think that would have stood out more. Yeah. Out of the six we got, I don't think it's bad. Like I said, I'm not a fan of Bianca, I'm not a fan of um, Matthew Sung. Um, I don't mind Miracle, it's okay, but it's nothing special. And then the other duo, they're. Dulcine. Bit... Oh, I can't even Dulcine, say Dulcine, however you say it. However, Mel says it on Friday. They're... It's alright. They're a bit wacky looking, so I'm a bit mm. worried it's going to be wacky staging and all this. But I think it's one of them where it's going to be really good or really bad. Yeah. Because it's yeah, it's agree. an okay audio at the minute. Yeah. But but she's hitting some pretty like you know wacky notes as well, and if she can't do them, it's going to basically be like her hide a dime. We're talking about Molly's outfit. If they get to Eurovision, both of their outfits are going to be very strange. <laughs> Gosh, oh, I, I, I dread to think what they're going to look like. I mean, at least with the others, you can sort of picture what they would look like and what the stage is going to be. Yeah. Obviously, Joe and Jake are just going to look very simple. Jake's probably going to have his guitar because he had it in the other thing. Obviously, Darlene are just going to look like they've been picked straight out of Nashville sort of thing, which would be yeah, fine. Yeah, so Darlene would be nice. I think it'd be quite like yeah. everyone in the audience will have their lights in their hand and all yeah. that sort of thing. And we don't really have like a slow country song yet, so that would be nice. No, I know it would definitely stand out. Calm folks, he works really well. It's like obviously like Dolly Parton, you know, and that's one I was reading up on Darlene that she said one of his ratings is Dolly Parton, so yeah. you can definitely see that influence. You can see it, yeah, that's true. So, yeah, but right now I think it's between those two duets, and until we get to Friday and I hear it live, I'm happy with either one, but it's a case of which one. Yeah, but overall. Now. Please, I would say. Overall, very, very pleased, happy. Yeah. Well done, BBC. Good final. Very, very happy. I think they need to keep this for the for coming years now. Yeah. I think it's like, well, it's like I just said, like, this is the safe year. Yeah. This is the let's not finish last year. <laughs> and then we build from this, I think. Like, we well, go from here. And yeah. And if we, if we do get a reasonably respectful result this year, more people are going to like likely going to want to get involved. Yeah, I, obviously we don't know what the other songs are like yet, but I do think if we sent Darlene or Joe and Jake, they could both finish quite highly if it went all good on the evening. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I, I, think, I, I think with the with the new voting system, I think Darlene's likely to do slightly better. I think Darlene are, mm. Darlene are going to be better with the juries than Joe and Jake. Definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. But the public will, again, probably do better than Darlene will when it comes yeah. to that. So it's very... So it's a bit of a nice start. But no, both yeah. good songs, and like you said at the start, wouldn't be upset if either of them won. No. Brilliant. So, obviously, the BBC's done well. We've got to see how it goes. We'll both be there on Friday. I'm we will really indeed. Looking yeah, very much looking forward to it. <laughs> Emily also the... sent hers. Oh, sorry, go on, yeah. Before I finish. And she's put Dulcimia sixth, Matthew fifth, Joe and Jake fourth, Bianca third, Carl second, and Darlene is her winner. So, across Carl the whole year. Across the whole Eurochip board, it looks like Darlene's our favourite if we're going on that. Indeed, it does. So <laughs> she, she is our preferred candidate for uh, the UK by the sounds of it. I was going to say quickly, like you said, we'll both be there on Friday and uh, all the coverage from uh, from the venue itself at the Euro underscore trip. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. Please don't come last again, UK. That's all I ask. <laughs> Please. <laughs>